Hey folks, Dr. Hagmeyer here, and in today's video, I want to share with you some information related to one of the most important thyroid markers after having your thyroid antibodies that you really need to have done. Today, you're going to learn about why reverse T3 is so important. You're going to understand why high levels can drastically impact the way you feel, making you feel sluggish, tired, not wanting to get out of bed in the morning, brain fog, all those low thyroid symptoms, uh, how they're related, um, and why it's important to have your doctor run a reverse T3, okay? This is very important. Not only do I believe the testing of T3 is very important, but also reverse T3, but I also believe looking at the T3, reverse T3 ratio, is absolutely critical for understanding thyroid performance, okay? But not only do I believe this, According to the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism, they state that the reverse T3 marker is one of the best measurements for thyroid tissue levels. It also goes on to say that the T3 reverse T3 ratio is the most useful marker for determining cellular function. Now my question to you is this, how many of you out there that are watching today's video have a doctor who has actually tested your T3, has tested your reverse T3, but then took it one step further and now looked at and calculated the, the T3 reverse T3 ratio, okay? Most doctors today are completely stuck back in the 1950s model of thyroid health. They continue to rely on TSH, they continue to rely just on T4, looking at T4 levels or free T4 levels, and then they simply just prescribe Synthroid or some other kind of thyroid replacement and they call it a day. This is a huge injustice to people who suffer with thyroid problems and only want to get better. So let me do this. Let me break this down a little bit for you. First, by uh, defining what reverse T3 is, where it comes from, and really, more importantly, uh, why it's so important, okay? When your thyroid makes thyroid hormones, it predominantly produces T4, okay? Now, T4 is the inactive form of thyroid hormone and T3 is the active form of thyroid hormone. So your body makes, your thyroid makes T4 and it makes T3. And I want you to think of T3 uh, as being the, the, uh, the, the hormone component that makes all the magic happen in your body, okay? For your body to maintain metabolism and do all of the things that your thyroid really does, your body needs to convert the inactive T4 into the active T3. Now, in the process of that conversion of, in, uh, of, of T4 into T3, there is reverse T3 that, that's produced, okay? Now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing unless those reverse T3 levels go too high. And this is a very, very common problem that I see in my practice every single day, okay? Here's the problem, though. Too much reverse T3 blocks up the receptor sites that are actually designed and meant for T3. So instead of T3 binding to the site on the cell, reverse T3 binds to the site. And what causes this and why does this matter to you is what we're gonna talk about, okay? Number one, high T3 levels are really caused by several different things. They're caused by adrenal gland dysfunction, which if you've been searching around on the internet, you know how important the adrenals can be to the, the, uh, the health of your thyroid. Prolonged stress or chronic stress, like a lot of people uh, have, who have chronic health problems are going through. We know that prolonged illnesses can cause elevated levels of, of high reverse T3. We know that low iron or anemia can cause this. We know that inflammation can cause this. We know that low B12 can cause this. We know that low B6 can cause this. Low selenium can cause this. Low vitamin D can cause this. We know yo-yo dieting can cause this. And something that I just did a, a three-part video series on, which is um, the MTHFR gene, okay? You're hearing a lot of, lot of information today out on the internet uh, about this MTHFR gene and its connection to the thyroid. And so I encourage you to watch that video as well. But here's the thing. This is why you'll never get better if all you do is take thyroid hormone and you really never correct these other problems, okay? The answer is not simply T3 or a combo T4, T3 that maybe some uh, compounding pharmacy might make. That's not the answer either. You'll, and, and you'll see this on the internet, okay? Here's why this matters to you. Because for a lot of people, not evaluating these thyroid markers leads to a wrong diagnosis, okay? Now, if you're watching this, then perhaps this is happening to you, okay? One of the ladies I just started working with, she's from Australia, and this is exactly what happened to her. She had all the typical signs of, of low thyroid, 
And so she kept complaining to her doctor, like probably many of you, and so her doctor increased her thyroid medication, thinking that if he just gave her maybe just a little bit more thyroid hormone, that this would make her symptoms improve and disappear. Well, each time she went back to the doctor, she would complain of all the same symptoms and how she felt like a walking zombie. If this doctor would have checked her T3 levels, if he would have looked at her free T3 levels, if he would have looked at her reverse T3 and the ratio of free T3 uh, to reverse T3, and he looked at the other layers causing this imbalance, he would have seen that adding more Synthroid medication was never going to make this woman feel better and in fact only continue to make her feel worse, okay? But unfortunately, most doctors are, are again, they're stuck in this proverbial box, okay? Uh, rarely do you find doctors really thinking outside of that box and really looking at all of the different layers and components that are involved in the thyroid. The thyroid is very complex, okay? And this patient, like so many other patients, was suffering with tissue resistance to thyroid hormones that she was being put on, okay? So when I say tissue resistance, here's what I mean, okay? What this means is that the thyroid is producing adequate levels of thyroid hormones, but the levels of T3 or reverse T3 are elevated, okay? And as these levels stay elevated, they can't bind to the cells because the site that T3 is supposed to bind to is being occupied by reverse T3, okay? This is very similar to what happens with pre-diabetics, people that have insulin resistance. It's not that they're not producing enough insulin. The problem is, is that the insulin can't shuttle glucose into the cell. The cells are not responding, okay? So remember, health occurs at the cellular level. You can have great levels of hormones in the blood, but what's more important is that these hormones not only thyroid hormones, but these hormones are actually getting into the cell, okay? That's the most important critical part. And that's exactly what is not happening with people who suffer with thyroid resistance. And this is also why dumping more hormones into a very, very confused body only makes them sicker, okay? So remember, it's all about healthy cellular function. You have to do all the things necessary to make the cells function properly. We want your cells seeing thyroid hormone. We don't wanna just see nice, numbers on, on, on paper, okay? Now, here's the thing. A lot of doctors will tell you that it's not important to check reverse T3 and thyroid resistance is, is rare. It never happens. Well, most doctors never test for it. So uh, virtually, of course, they're going to miss it almost all the time. And this is why they tell you it's so rare, okay? If they would have tested for it, they would have seen it. The other thing I want you to know about is, again, the ratio between reverse T3 and free T3, okay? This is important to look at because sometimes the reverse T3 is normal and many of the other markers are only slightly or, or marginally off, okay? This is where doing a little bit of math can really, really be helpful and this is something that we can help you with, okay? This is where the ratio can shed a, a little bit of more light on what's happening inside your body. Now, here are the numbers that I want you to be aware of, okay? Here's some, some number crunching, okay? With uh, the free, rever I'm sorry, with the free T3 and the reverse T3 ratio, uh, healthy ratios are going to be 20 or higher. So let me say that again. If you're going to take free T3 and divide that by reverse T3, you want that number to be 20 or greater. Okay, that's very, very important. Um, another, uh, another way you can measure it is you can actually take your total T3 and take your total T3 and divide it by the reverse T3, and that number should be 10 or higher. Okay, so those are two very uh, important number crunching that you can do uh, if you have your blood work and if you've had those, those uh, numbers done, uh, those markers done rather. So in closing today's video, just a couple reminders here. Um, in summary, many people with low thyroid or even autoimmune thyroid disease should get their total T3, their free T3, and their reverse T3 levels checked, okay? These markers and the ratios that we just talked about earlier are critical and will really help your doctor, whoever that you're working with, understand some of the causes behind all of these terrible symptoms that go unmanaged, okay? Again, one other thing, here's the thing. I want you to listen very closely here, okay? Too many of you watching this video are getting hung up on the kind of thyroid medication that you're taking or the dosage, okay? You become upset with your doctor because either your levels are, are really all over the place or they're too high or they're too low or you're, or you're just being told that your levels are good. Don't be upset. Just understand that there's much more to this picture. Keep things in perspective, okay? Only 10% of your thyroid problem lies in determining the kind of thyroid medication that you should be on, okay? That's very important to recognize. Again, most of you watching this are, are taking thyroid medication and you still feel lousy, okay? And there are reasons for this. 
I don't prescribe thyroid medications, and I'm, I'm able to help over 95% of the people who actually reach out to me and want help. And the reason I do this, or the reason I can do this, is because I look at the bigger picture, and we order the right tests, okay? The big picture lies in figuring out all of these different layers behind why the thyroid is not working right in the first place. And this can only be done after you have these, these pieces laid out, okay? Think of it like a big puzzle, okay? Now, if you watch any of my other videos on, on the thyroid, I always talk about how blood tests, TSH, T4, and free T4, don't really paint the entire picture, okay? To truly address the thyroid, here's what you need to understand. Here are some really important things, and if you're taking notes, write this down, okay? One, specific vitamins, okay? There are very critical and crucial vitamins that are needed by your thyroid, and the dosages are very, very important. Many of you are really just winging it here, okay? You're, you're basically, you know, you're listening to somebody on the radio, you read something on the internet, you're really not on the right dosage, you're, you're not at a therapeutic dosage, you're not taking the right vitamin perhaps, you're not taking it at the right time. Some of you are taking vitamins that are actually making you worse, um, like iodine for example, if you have Hashimoto's. You need to understand issues related to the absorption, okay? This is, a, a, again, a very, very over, commonly overlooked area for people that have uh, thyroid issues is the importance of the gut, okay? Absorption, critical, okay? And this can be compromised uh, in many, many different ways. Things like parasites, things like infections, digestive disorders, enzyme deficiencies, um, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. This is a very common problem that I'm seeing with many patients that have thyroid problems. Um, I see a lot of gallbladder problems. If you've had your gallbladder removed, obviously there's some very specific supplementation you need to, hit, uh, to take in order to help uh, take and alleviate some of the stress off your liver. Some other problems related to it is a leaky gut. And then things like food sensitivity. These are all things that obviously compromise digestion. The other thing here is you need to understand how important iron levels are um, in, in, in obviously, you know, why you need to look at these iron levels and correct these, uh, these levels, why you need to actually have your ferritin levels checked. That's also very, very important. And if you continue to suffer with brain fog and memory issues and confusion, these things are never gonna get better until you actually correct blood sugar problems and the delivery of oxygen and, and blood sugar to those cells. If you deprive it of any of these, uh, these metabolic markers, everything is going to be off, okay? The next thing you need to do is you need to identify any food sensitivities, okay? Now, gluten is one of these, but there are many, many others, okay? In fact, a study that came out last year stated that people who actually have thyroid problems need to take more thyroid medication, okay? So there's definitely a clear link between uh, the thyroid and, and gluten, okay? All of these things can have a drastic impact on thyroid performance. So when you address these root causes, you can improve your health and in many cases, get completely better, okay? Correcting these areas will have a greater impact on your thyroid, they'll help improve your thyroid, and many patients can actually even come off thyroid medication. Now, let me say this, do not stop taking thyroid medication un unless your prescribing doctor has told you to do so. That's very important, okay? So I don't ever, wanna, I don't ever want patients to just uh, discontinue their thyroid medication and, and not be under the management of the doctor who's actually prescribing you know, those medications, okay? Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I know we covered a lot of information. I hope you uh, can appreciate the importance of actually checking that reverse T3 marker. Um, doing those calculations and, and just understanding some of those causes behind it. Um, if you found this video helpful, please share it with your friends, share it with your family members. Head over to my website, drhagmar.com. There's a lot of other different videos that I've done there that you can watch and, and gain a better understanding of, of what you need to do in order to peel back these other layers of your thyroid disorder, okay? Hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, take care.